Dance and Nomad at night. Starring the one and only Nomad. Yo, 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 welcome to Nomad at Night. I am your friendly host, Nomad, and got my trusty next to me, the Canuck, who is on mute. And we got Mr. Brian, and we got my man J2K to come back. And tonight, I had I had some thoughts in mind. We have so many people on the show all the time, so many different guests, so many co-hosts, that I, re I remember doing the show with J2K. And the last show that he, he did up with us was, was a mock draft, I believe. And uh, I just didn't, I listened to it. I don't think, I didn't think he had enough time to really converse like I would have liked him to, just because we had so many different personalities on that day. So today, um, you know, I just wanted to offer him an opportunity to come back here and kind of give him the runway. And also Mr. Brian, who produces the show a whole lot and, you know, works on the chat. Like right now, nobody's doing that for us, but we need to, uh, we need to give him some love too, and make sure that he gets from behind the scenes and, and get some showcase from now and now and again. Um, but before we get into the show, let me speak to the thumbnail real quick, because soon as I got into the uh, green room, I saw a post by Do It All. How you doing, Do It All? By the way, one of the uh, one of our regular viewers, man. Hey, look, I just want to say this to you. Um, before you judge, what the thumbnail was kind of ambiguous, I'm sure. Because all it says was, you know, him showing his pink phone and the fingernails and all that. You know, is it new swag? And, and, and is the city of Chicago ready to embrace it? I think that's more or less what the thumbnail says. What we're here to do is to be fair and objective about that conversation. That's it. It's not, it's not to try to demean anybody in any kind of way. It's not to try to bring anyone down in any kind of way. Wouldn't do it. First of all, wouldn't do it. I don't give a damn. But that's the later part of the show. We're going to get into that a little bit later on. But first, let's give out some pleasantries. And, and we'll start with my man, the Canuck. Canuck, how you doing, man? Let's 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 get some shout outs. It's Sunday night. I'm two drinks in. Should be a good show. We'll talk some <laughs> Caleb Williams. We'll talk some Bears. I got my guy, Brian, Beardless Brian. Uh, it's it's a, it's a spectacle. All all levels of of awesomeness should be shared tonight. Um, chat, good to see you guys. Loving you guys. Bear Truth Nine's in the building. I see you there, Bishop. I see you, Bishop. Rajnesh Omar, yo, Rajnesh, yo, we see you out there, bro. Thanks for representing with us today. Bruja Seven, Trapper Keeper, Cornelius Squalls, Booby, not boobies. Boobies in the building. Squeegee's in the building, Ant Mass, um, Chris Cook, Patty Lara, hey Patty, Marco King, Dobzy34, Daryl Gibson, 10 Bears is down with us, Andrew Barnes, Andre Barnes is down with us, uh, Oliver Chapman is down with us, hey, it, it, it's, uh, it's good to see all the love in the chat, you too, James Ford, good to see all the love, we'll keep this thing moving out, I'll throw it down to my guy, J2K to uh you know to give some uh some pleasantries if you will yeah thanks for having me on tonight you guys and uh it's all the no maniacs what up what up what up and uh decided to chop it up with you guys and talk some bears football right on right. mr brian hey no maniacs always great seeing you thank you nomad for pulling me out of the hole let me get a little bit of sunlight lord knows i need it uh Things are going well. Uh, it should be an interesting, fun show. All right. How about this, fellas? Uh, let's let's get this thing. Let me let me say something, man. Because kids, if you can help me out in the chat real quick while I'm talking, man, that'd be great. I want to say something, man. And I'm I'm going to toot the horn of the entire network and the in the channel, not mine, but everybody involved. I listen. I've been. I listened to a couple of shows over over the weekend. And um, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys something. You know, no matter what's going on during what whatever part of the uh, season, whether we're during the season, off season, which is where we are right now, doesn't matter. Because when you come to the Nomad Network, man, this is a unique. When I say unique network, I can't find conversation this riveting anywhere else. We find the the most minute things to talk about 
and turn them into a hell of a conversation. I can't find that anywhere else. And I'm not trying to put down. There's a lot of great, good podcasters out there. You know, some of them have been here on the show, as a matter of fact. And I just wanted to uh, take my hat off to the guys that helped me do this. You know, every single day, kids, the bishop, Sean, of course, Chris, who does so much in the back. I mean, Brian, everybody that's involved in this, man, I want to take a minute to make sure I give them some love, man, because I'm telling you, we got something special cooking. And eventually, man, I, I see good things with this, man. It's just right now we're in a down period. Most of the viewers are, are kind of just like kind of backed off of Bears content because it's probably not a whole lot to talk about in their minds. And, you know, the viewers, everybody's views are down. But I just wanted to tip my hat to the guys that helped me do this. All those guys, the Canuck, uh, Brian and Chris and the Bishop, Sean, everybody that's involved, Nick, everybody. I just want to tip my hat to everybody involved, man, because somehow in some way, we always seem to make this thing riveting. The conversations are just riveting. And I'm not always there looking at the show. I'm, I'm listening to it while I'm doing things around the house. And I'm telling you that that I'm telling you, th these shows are absolutely riveting. And I'm I'm not surprised that people support us, but we do appreciate all the support that we get, man. It's just it's just lovely to listen to it sometimes as a, as a viewer. Go ahead, Ken. No, I've been I've, I've been butchering Rajneesh Rajneesh's name. It's Rajneesh. <laughs> Sorry, Rajneesh. I got you. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry, bro. <laughs> no, that's all good. I just wanted to make sure I pause for a second and give everybody a shout out, man, because we do some awesome content. And I, I believe in what we're doing, and I can see why people like it so much, man. It's just different than all the content out there. But uh, let's start off. With some um, news, some news and notes, J2K. Um, Trevondre Sweat got arrested for a DWI over the weekend. He's probably projected to go either late first round, early second. Man, I hate to hear stuff like that. It's like a guy every year, a guy or two every year right before the draft. It's like, what's getting into y'all's heads, man? You know you're right there from getting – you're right there getting ready to get the bag. I mean, you, you basically – there's a check with your name written on it. With a certain dollar amount, now you just probably cost yourself five million. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a bad timing. But go ahead, go ahead, J2K. Oh, I'll just yeah, that's some bad timing. You know, um, we've seen it before with uh, Laramie Tunsil minutes before the draft. Um, so yeah, I I feel for the guy because you know these guys are young and it's not it's not like. Um, a very it's not a egregious thing it's not a character problem it's probably a dumb mistake he's young he's in his semi off season before the draft and he got busted man there's probably you know a couple dozen other players doing the same goofy things he's doing mm -hmm. and he got caught yeah brian you want to you want to speak to that well donnie <laughs> that it's pretty cut and dry uh we're all guilty of doing stupid things, uh, and we got a pyramid. There may be that one time you don't get caught, and the next time you do, you may do it 10,000 times and not getting caught in that one time. And timing, anytime you get a rest, there isn't, there isn't no good thing as good timing. I guess unless you're homeless and hungry for a meal, um, it just it sucks, but like J2K and you said, it, it unfortunately happens every year, and I don't know what anybody can do about it. I mean, how many examples do you need? You can go back to Warren Sapp. Uh, you know, he dropped not a lot, but still from where he should have been to where he got drafted. Yeah, I mean, he cost himself several million dollars. Uh, I don't know what the NFL or sports in general needs to do, but these young guys, they, <laughs> uh, pace yourself. You got three more weeks and then you can party and afford the Uber drivers and limousines and all that. I, you know, best of luck to him. That's all I can say. Yeah, that's unfortunate, man. You know, hey, I didn't like, know WrestleMania was on, uh, kids. I guess that's on right now. Yeah, it, it is. Time. It is. I'm. I'm out. Uh, I've. 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 I've been a. I was. I was a lifelong wrestling fan up until about 
you know, about the year 2000, 2002, I had kids and um, I was, I was done. That was it for me. So I catch up a little bit here and there, but all the old school stuff is where I'm at. If we're talking WrestleMania tonight, though, ooh, uh, there should be a big match. Cody, Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes, Ro Roman Reigns, something like that with the rock involved. Should be a big match. Oh, well, that, uh, tag team was last night and Reigns and The Rock won. Tonight is one-on-one -on -one with Reigns and Cody Rhodes. Okay, so we'll see uh, See if he can end the story. We'll see. All right, how about this? Because uh, uh, I think the uh, safety market just got a bump. Kyle Duggar signed, uh, uh, let me see here, a four-year deal, 66 mil with, with, with uh, let me see, 24. I think he, I think he got I'm not sure how much he got guaranteed, but I think um, he's got 66 mil. I think, I think maybe 20 something might be guaranteed. I'm not sure. Somebody, if somebody felt like checking on that, that'd be great. But uh, Kyle Duggar, safety market just got a, a little little bump up with the Patriots. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you think about that, J2K? That sounds expensive. That's like 16 and a half <laughs> mil per year. I love it when J two K is on the show, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a good player, but uh, you know, I mean, we were paying Bojack what thirteen, fourteen million a year, even though he was having some down years. Yeah. All right, I'll I let mean, somebody but, else do that. I mean, but think about the the, uh, the safety market. There's some safeties around the league. Like, like damn, I, I I did this too early, or. Shit, my time is coming soon, you know. What I mean, that that has to bode well for the safety market. Some of the safeties out there, like when is Jaquan into his third year? He'd be into his fourth year next year, something like that. Just the safety market, you know, that's a, a nice signing for them. Well, I'll I'll throw a little something into that. Remember last year how the Bears they had to spend X amount of dollars. New England is kind of in that same boat this year that how the Bears were last year, you had to spend. So they probably give it, you know, to somebody that's, a, you know, a, a core team member team member, and still, you know, young enough to play a few more years. I mean, technically, he could – another contract. Hey, all the new people in the chat, uh, Calvin Canterbury, don't, welcome to the family, man. Glad to see you in the chat. I don't know if you're new to the channel or not, but man, please, guys, get the likes up, smash that like button, man. And if you're new to the channel, please give us a subscribe. We would definitely appreciate that. But uh, hey, this is directly for you, uh, J2K, because I remember having conversations with you when this draft happened. I think I was still with the bar room. Um, Felix and Udike Uzama, all right? This conversation is, is connected to him. Why? Because the uh, Chiefs just signed Mike Dana to a to a, a four year. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Mike Dana got no three year, twenty four million with the Chiefs, twenty four million guaranteed. What does that say about the uh, progression of Felix and Udike Uzama? Would he would would Mike Dana have been signed to that amount of money for that length if Felix had a had of uh, progress in the, in the speed that they would have projected him to? You know, that's a good question. I was a huge fan of him coming out last year. Um, I would say it's it's too early, um, unless something behind closed doors in the locker room. He's got a bad attitude we don't know about. Um, but, yeah, I would say it's a little too early to pass judgment on Felix after one year. Mm, I, I I'm not I'm not in it to pass judgment on him, but it tells me exactly what we always preach. And you you heard me say this, J2K, many a times. Yeah. Especially D linemen. The the um the the game in the NFL is a lot more toolsy in the NFL and it's a lot more fast. I, I read a, I read an article, J2K, where they were asking him about that because he was showing a little bit of frustration on the sideline about his uh amount of playing time. He's just getting in, you know, in spots and he didn't right. like and, you know, he's got he's got uh, he's got Mike Dana in front of him. He's got Charles O'Menehue. He's got what's his name? George Karlofkis to deal with. You know, those those guys produce, you know what I mean? And and the game, I mean, you really have to elevate your, your, your you have to get really toolsy in the NFL. And he was talking about the speed of the game in that interview. 
And I and I, I try to tell people all the time, especially when it comes to projection with defensive ends, you got to understand what you're what you're asking. You 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 you're bringing in a, a guy that you're talking about. These these tackles are the best in the world. There's no if ands or buts about it. They are the best in the world. And you, the college game versus the NFL game, especially at that position, is absolutely different. And so I think there's a grace period. I don't think people, I don't care who it is, whether it's if we drive to the edge right now, whether it's Lot 2, Dallas Turner, I don't give a damn who it is. He's going to need some time to get a little bit more toolsy to get, you know, these are the best offensive tackles in the world. And right. they paid every week, just like everybody else, probably a lot more than them. And they need they need their stats determine how much they get paid, right? And so yeah, and I just I'm just researching right now, really quick, is I'm seeing 153 snaps over 15 games. That's not good. That's 10 10 snaps a game. Yeah. Spagnola so did snap. Spagnola said it had more to do with the guys in front of him than it had to do with him. Said so he's picking up everything in the meeting room. He's just uh the guys in front of him are just playing well, so uh, he'll, he'll he'll get his chance and he'll he'll probably do well. But I don't think they're displeased with his with his effort or anything. No, he just got he's got dogs in front of him, man. He just got dogs yeah. in front of him. He went into a situation. He probably <clears throat> like any rookie that gets drafted. I think he got drafted in the first round. Am I am I not? Yeah, right. At the end of the first round, he was the Chiefs' first round pick. Yes. And you know what? He was he was like a, a dog on the field in college. He was a hustler. He'd run run plays down. You know, he'd stop the second whistle. So I know it's not hustle, man. So you might be right, uh, Chris, on Spagnola saying that it was the guys in front of him, not so much him. Brian, you want a piece of that? You are kids. It doesn't matter. Um, I liked him at Kansas State. You got veterans in front of you. It, you know, if you want to eat, you've got to, you know, hit hit the gate, you know, quickly. Apparently, he wasn't, and you know, not that he's a bad player. And Kansas City would be foolish to give up on him after just one year. That's about all I got to say about that. Kid, okay, you want to speak to that? No, nah, I'm, I'm I'm good, man. What else we got? Where are we going to next? All right. Well, we got some 30 visits to talk about because uh, – all right. So I'm going to frame this in the way that I did with uh, – with J2K had – he made a point about it too. He's going get, to get a chance to speak to that. But uh, I re if you guys recall, during the owners meeting, um, you know, Flus and Poles, you know, they said they were going to break the, uh, you know, the, the scouts and the, and the coaches off into pods and they were going to study positions. and and this is all about picking at number nine, I believe. And it's about the value of, of what they think each position has. And so you say, I think they were broken off into three. I think it was O-tackle, D-end, and I think receiver. And so, and we were just pontificating in the back. I just stole one of Shorty's words um, about whether or not, I think they, I think what came away from it, I imagine that they came away, hey, bring me your top three. Bring me your top three. And so since, and I think that probably takes a couple of two or three days for them to uh, really game that out and suss that out. And I think probably I would imagine they came and said, give me your top three. And since then, in the last couple of days, what did you hear about? Dallas Turner's coming to, uh, coming to, I think he already did his 30 visit. You heard about who else? J2K, help me out. In the last few days. Oh, um, um, Liatu Latu. Liatu Latu is coming tomorrow. Uh, Malik Malik neighbors, uh, yeah, worthy, and also who else is that? Brock Marvin Bowers, Harris, Marvin Harrison, not Marvin Harrison Jr. Oh yeah. So you got you I'm got the top three receivers. You got some who they think are the top three receivers. We have seen uh, two guys from the top three uh, defensive end class, uh, with which is uh, Dallas Turner and Latu, and we have seen an old tackle. Here's the interesting one. An old tackle who's projected as of right now, and who was who was was who was the guy again? J two K. Uh, Tyler Guyton. Tyler Guyton, who was projected somewhere around second, maybe third round, and so maybe they're they're thinking about okay, maybe it said to me 
that they thought that there's no way we're going to get one of those high end tackles with, with, with four picks. And so let's start, let's bring in a guy who we can maybe trade up and, you know, get into a situation to get him in the second round. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, I agree. And I also think that you're looking at um, a plan to stay at the ninth pick and a plan to move back and draft some other guys. Low battery. Say, say that one more time, uh, J2K. Oh, just there's a plan to stay at nine and there's a plan to trade back. And, you know, I've got some theories and all these kind of things on, you know, who we're bringing in for these top 30 visits as far as who we might be trading back for, you know, like Brock Bowers and Ben Sanat, you know, Bowers is probably, I don't know, 15, 20 range, maybe 12 to 20. Uh, Ben Sanat. I wouldn't be surprised that guy sneaks into the first round. I think he's a second round um, draft pick. He's my number two tight end. The more I think people look at Ben Sanat, I think more they have him as their number two tight end. Um, and and not to get off subject, but I think this leads to the potential conversation that, that we may draft another tight end much higher than expected given the two tight ends we currently have on the roster. That's that's a – you know, J2K, I know you've heard me say this enough times to probably make you choke, but for, I would have I would have gone along with that. Any other in any other scenario than this one, I think I think because of what they did in free agency, the the tight end position in the draft is an absolute luxury they can't afford. I, I just don't. I mean th that doesn't mean that they won't draft the tight end exactly like you're saying. But in my mind, the way I compute it and the way I look at the layout of the situation, it just seems like a um, a reach in this draft to draft a tight end when you got. Positional yeah. need. No, I 100% agree with you, Nomad. I mean, we've got Everett. We've got Komet. Two top tight ends in the league. You know, we could have a third guy who can fill in if one of those guys get injured. But we we brought two tight ends, in my opinion, the top two tight ends in this draft to Hallis Hall. It's, so I'm it just suggests to me that they're – there's, you know, they're sniffing around. And another thing is, I don't think they're being very secretive about this stuff. You know, last year we drafted four guys out of the guys that we brought in. This year it seems the same. I don't think there's a, a smoke screen here. J2K, it seems like to, to me, I'm just going to tell you what it looks like on the surface. It seems like they're virtue signaling what they think about the tight end crop. They think highly of this, this tight end class, and I do too. I think it's some damn good tight ends in this class. And I, but I, quite frankly, I don't see it, man. But if I'm wrong, I'll be the first one to come on here and fall on the sword. But wow. Well, let me, let I me ask you. Answer, first, so. I apologize. Actually, I was going to let Brian speak and Ked speak. I'm, I'm talking too much. <laughs> You're no, good. Did you, I, finish, finish your sentence, brother. Finish your sentence. Uh, well, you I, I don't want to keep derailing the conversation, but you know, uh, Flus did say we're going to take someone who affects the quarterback, and we're looking at defensive tackles. Uh, we brought in Byron Murphy, so you know there's a world that may we may live in in the future where we took a defensive tackle and a tight end after we took Caleb Williams, and I kind of want people to kind of get used to that possibility because it really is outside of the conversation we're having. We're talking defensive end and we're talking wide receiver. But I 100% agree with you, Nomad, that it's not what I I foresaw happening. But given the top 30 visits and what we're sniffing around and what they're saying, I, I'm starting to open up to a possibility that this is the case. Yeah, look at Rob Hansen. See, Rob Hansen, there, there's a, a, one, what Rob Hansen just said for all those listening to us on the audio pod. Rob Hansen says, don't estimate, don't, don't underestimate Waldron's use of three tight end packages. That is something that absolutely sticks out, Rob Hansen, when you look at his his offensive schematics. He used a, th a three tight end package quite often. And so you are right, uh, Rob Hansen, J2K. That I hadn't computed as I was talking to you guys currently. 
that is something that, that really does stick out in his offensive schematics. He does like to use three tight ends. And right now we don't have a third one, I don't believe. If we do, so I, I don't saying? know who the hell he is. So what you're saying is one of that we're going to pick another tight end and have him sit on the bench and rotate in on three tight end packages as opposed to getting a, 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 a starter at, at a position of need. That's hey, what you're saying. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just putting out and pointing out what Rob Hansen just pointed out as a nuanced part of the conversation that we should probably mention. Well, and where's Shane with- Walter from? The Shanahan system and the 49ers. And what do they do? Use check, they're fullback, and Kittle, they're they tight end. Fullback, they use a tight end, you're right. But and like and- you guys, I would be absolutely disappointed if you use one of those draft picks on the tight end. You'd be disappointed? Absolutely, especially at nine. And yeah, especially so this wide receiver, wide receiver <laughs> class. All right, without nine, a, yeah. Without a question. Like again, if all if all of the viable wide receivers have been somehow scooped up before our ninth pick, which is very doubtful, you go you you I could see them going with the Brock Bowers, but even then I trade back. I think I think do. Brock Bowers and Ben Sinat are both trade back candidates. Well, you know, we looked at uh, Graham Barton, who is someone that we don't have a draft pick for that range. At Tyler Guyton, Check right? Out. Check out Bear Truth 9 there, uh, J2K. And I'll just read it out loud for everybody that's listening to the audio. Oh, he likes Jakeem Bell. Yeah, Jakeem Bell's nice. But go ahead. Um, I'm not a fan of Bell. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't want to bust anybody's bubble. But for me, Bell is is one of those – he's a big slot. For me, you, you look at tight ends who aren't uh, a threat in the blocking game, in the run game. Um, for me, just go with a third receiver, go with the big re- third receiver, big slot, go with the small slot receiver. I'm just never a fan of guys who are one dimensional at tight end. Brian, you want a piece of that? I not really much I could add, um, with Waldron. I, I don't know what the percentage that he uses a three tight end. Uh, I do remember reading where, uh, what's his name? Uh, receiver from Ohio State was mad that he wasn't getting that many receptions because he had Lockett and Metcalf in front of him. And they had, well, back, yeah, Seattle had three tight ends there too. Uh, Smith and Jigba. Thank you, sir. Uh, Maybe, I don't know, maybe a defensive guy for number nine uh, trade back and try to get a tight end. I, hell, I'm open for all of this. I just want the Bears to win. And I do but, agree with uh, Keith Harris in the chat. Tight end is a luxury pick from where I'm sitting, right? Because we've got a whole bunch of needs still. We don't have enough draft picks. Even if you trade back, you pick up a, a second with a trade back or something, this wide receiver class is still so good. <clears throat> we can still upgrade a defensive end, defensive tackle. Getting a third tight end, just it's it sounds crazy to use a high draft pick on one, but here we brought in you know the number one, and in my opinion, the number two best tight ends of the draft for top 30 visits who absolutely fit Waldron's scheme. So, you know, what do I do with it? Um, Kid, do you want to speak to that? Uh, Sure, yeah. So here's the thing. (laughs) There's 30 kids coming in. All of them can't get drafted. Some of them have to be smoke screens, right? So um, they're going to bring in who they bring in. Odds are they're going to choose and select out of that group of 30. They have a history of doing so. I just... I'm highly doubtful it'll be at the tight end position. But once more, hey, you know, they 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 shuck and dived last year and did some things I didn't necessarily think they were going to do either. But given those maneuvers last year, here we are this season. They don't really need a defensive tackle, but maybe a three-tech, right? Like, I can still see them doing that with a Byron Murphy, et cetera. 
Uh, but like tight end at nine, that's just crazy to me. That's uh, that's ludicrous. Or not at nine, but tight end as a trade back. I think Brock Bowers is twelve to twenty range. I think Ben Sanat is probably like a twenty eight to thirty eight range. But I'm I'm much higher on Ben Sanat than I think other people. I, I saw someone in the chat mention he's a fourth round draft pick. He's not. Yeah, he's you think absolutely Ben Sanat's not. a first round tight end. Ben I think he potentially can be a first round. I think twenty eight to thirty eight range. So he could. I mean, this guy looks like Dallas Clark to me. Ben Sennett. Ben Sennett. I everybody knows if they've been watching anybody that's regular to the uh, network knows. Ben Sennett, I thought, was it one of the uh guys that stuck out to me in uh watching all these guys? And not I mean, I'm not talking about any particular uh position. I'm talking about overall. Overall, Ben Sennett is one of those guys that really stuck out to me as a guy that you couldn't really find a flaw in his game. He did whatever they asked him, whether it was stay in line and block, get out and get separation on receivers, you know, being a decoy, anything they ask him to do. He, he's he got it all. He's got it all. Ben Sennett is going to be an absolute plus to whatever team he goes to and right away. I think I don't think the tight end game is, I mean, depending on your scheme, depending on your scheme, if he gets into a situation like this one, which is a little diverse for uh, tight ends, I think. Absolutely. I, I don't think there's any chance in hell we get him unless he slips by way of the, the, the board changing, you know, during the draft, during the real time, the board kind of shifting a little bit because things start to happen that nobody kind of predicted that would. And he, he falls into the second round somewhere. If that happens, then, you know, he's going to be a steal for somebody. But I don't mm -hmm. see us using one of those picks on a tight end. I really don't. No, I don't either. But um I'll just, here's a tidbit for everybody in the chat and you guys, there's a guy on Twitter, his name's Matt Waldman, and he does a bunch of all 22 research. Go follow that guy and scroll through what he's putting out. He did a bunch of breakdowns of Ben Sonat, and he's a guy I absolutely trust. So, you know, check out that footage, check out what he, what he says, you know, you will be absolutely impressed. He is a, a great blocker. He's a great receiver. You know, I can't say enough good things about Ben Sanat. Come draft day, I'm pretty sure that he's going to be in that range, 28 to 38. And if he's a top 30 visit for the Bears, we get a trade back. I would not be surprised we make that pick. But I agree. it's It seems like a luxury pick. But who knows, man? I got to I gotta deal with the information that I'm looking at and and do what I can with it. I'll tell you what, guy. Go ahead, kids. Go ahead. No, no, no. Um, um you, you go, brother. Go no, I, I was. I wanted to open this up to you guys on the panel, and to everybody in the chat. Everybody in the chat. Think about this for a second before you type in your your answer. Well, we're talking about the number nine pick, right? And we got. It's, it's probably about. I would say anywhere between. 10 to 12 people that, that gets in conversation on a regular basis as far as our option and what who who we should draft at that position if we keep the pick. Give me a guy that is outside of rotation of that conversation that nobody is talking, people aren't talking about enough as a possibility at number nine. Can you think of a guy that's not really receiving the love nationally, locally, or in these podcasts or national media shows? Think about a guy it's not being in those conversations and it probably should be. I'll wait and give you mine. Well, I mean, that depends on what, if you're talking about how many actual blue chip players there are at their positions this year, just a few. And Bowers is one of that for the tight end. But is he worth taking at nine? That That's, you know, the million dollar question. So did you want to say Brock Bowers, man? Probably just because of, of his – how he dominates dominates the tight end position. If we're talking about guys like we're talking about guys, I'll just throw Keon Coleman in there. Oh, I like that. That's, that's probably right. the, the, the one guy that I'll throw out all of a sudden – Keon Coleman's name has sort of gone a little bit silent. It's gone cold. 
Um, his tape looks vi- like people really like Roma Dunze. Keon Coleman and, and Roma Dunze look very similar when you watch the tape. That th- those are the two guys that I sort of zeroed in on as as potential X receivers. But then you look at obviously Brian Thomas Jr. and you see how fast he actually runs by way of combine, um, and you 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 know things get interesting. But um, yeah, why not Keon Coleman? Yeah, and I would, I would say Brian Thomas Jr. That was going to be my answer. Mm-hmm. Um, but in addition, is a guy maybe not at nine, but a guy who could get taken much earlier than people think. Adoni Mitchell, um, he's got the traits as a top ten pick. It's just the question is, you know, does he have the fire? Does he have the passion? Um, there's kind of some talk about him being lazy on the routes when he wasn't the primary target. Um, mm-hmm. I saw some inconsistency on the plays that when he was the primary target that I have some issues with, but you want to talk about the upside with this kid. I mean, it's huge. I want to like, he's six, four runs a four, three, something uh, incredibly athletic, long arms, you know, like why isn't he in that conversation if, if this year wasn't the wide receiver year it was, I think he would be in a conversation of a 10 to 15 draft pick. I agree. Isn't it kind of weird that we us three picked offensive players? No. Nope. I, I, uh, think, I think Adnai Mitchell suffers from the same thing Brian Thomas kind of suffered for, even though he was really the number one receiver in Texas. He had to share the shine with Worthy, and Worthy so fast. Yes, so, but uh, and we, yeah, Ad, Adonai Mitchell. I think there may be some concerns about his, you know, his his attitude. But uh, he's definitely got the uh, he's he's got the the profile, right? And we did bring Worthy in as a top thirty visit, which is a guy I think you you trade back into that twenty to thirty range for. Well, I, I think I, there's some great names in here, man. I've seen a lot a lot of uh, Olu Pashano. Seeing a lot of uh, who else did I see? Seeing a couple of Donnie Mitchell. I seen some Talish Fuaga, who I think is already in that conversation rotation. I, th- I thought that who was going to be your guy, Fuaga. Well, everybody thought that man because I've been talking about him so much. Um, I tell you, a guy that uh, <laughs> I think he's in the conversation, but I don't think enough people are talking about him at nine. Tell me if I'm right or wrong, but I think um, I think Xavier Worthy, man. I think Xavier Worthy in, in getting an, enough conversation at nine. I think he's exposed at nine. At nine. I, I, I think that's that's just not being spoken of quite a bit, quite enough. Isn't, he a, isn't he a wide receiver? Yes, he is, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah. The only issue, I, I don't disagree with you as far as the talent and skill level, and if it was a different – wide receiver class absolutely i think that's just the the argument is that you've got what five receivers that you could arguably say are above him i mean those top five those top six receivers are amazing right like they they really are that's why i wouldn't add to me that might be it all depends on who's left on the board once more we're talking about the ninth pick if we're assuming three if not four quarterbacks go you only got four more picks. That means no, no trenches are touched in the next five picks. Basically, it's all right. Wide receivers, right? Like in, in in that scenario where you're 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 going to get a to get a worthy that early. Um, uh, if not, one of those five wide wide receivers should be available. Whether it's MHJ, Neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr., Keon Coleman, or or Roma Dunze, not in any specific order there, and worthy. It's uh to me that to me that's a reach. Yeah, do you know how bad I wanted to say uh Brian Thomas? I think we've done due diligence on this podcast every show when we're talking about these prospects and getting Brian Thomas Jr. injected into the bloodstreams. Now I think he's a regular part of the conversation. Can't claim that we're the reasons we're the reason why he is, but I think there's a lot more people paying attention to Brian Thomas Jr. than there were probably a month ago. Or two months ago, right? That, that would have been I would have been the easy <laughs> person to come out of my mouth. Why do you think that might be? Because people give Malik neighbors so much attention. 
Malik Neighbors is such a stud that they don't realize it's a stud combo. And because of his uh, presence on the other side, Malik Neighbors got a lot of one-on-ones. I was trying to goad you into a conversation about mm -hmm. how and, his and, and, stock rose the way, wanna, I'm, I'm at the combine to... because he ran so fast at the combine. I was trying to goad you, and you dodged that, it. That you didn't did. hurt when you're six like, four. Uh, yeah, wax that, on, that wax off. Didn't do anything to hurt, man. But that Lord didn't hurt him. Keep but Tom, Tom helped him quite a gonna bit. be a better. He's gonna be a better pro than he was a college player. He's hey. built. For, he's built for the pro game. Chris, do you remember the first time we had that conversation? We was talking about receivers, and you were just like, "Man, did you check I, out?" I believe we were in high school. Go what? ahead. <laughs> the first that time we had ago? a conversation. Go ahead, man. I'm just messing. Do, do you remember that? And you was like, "Man, hey, did you check out number 11? I was like, "Dude, I had to stop." Because yeah, I was watching. Every what? time I watched it for neighbors, man, I, you know, when I watch LSU's games, whether it was for Daniels or neighbors. I always ended up paying a lot of attention to Brian Thomas Jr. Hey, you see this right here? I, yeah. I was hey, I yeah. want, just what Tim Bears is talking about. I want you guys to know when I'm look, whenever I'm breaking down, when I'm done looking at all 22 on one of these receivers, I'm gonna try to see if I can find Steve Smith breaking them down. Hey, I find have you found Steve Smith breaking down Malik Washington? Man, I'm telling you, no, I, I didn't get to him yet. You got to get to him, man. Malik Washington is—he's a pro player, man. I'm telling man. you, he's going. Somebody's going to get him in the third round, probably, and they're going to—they're going to have a uh, you know eight to ten years a slot receiver. That I, I think that you know what Steve Smith's only uh, drawback on him was, Chris. When I was looking at it, mm -hmm. he was like, I, "I don't like these guys to come in and and be kind of little passive. He's quiet, you know. He's a little bit passive, and he said that's not." <laughs> Well, that was Steve Smith, that's for sure. He wasn't quiet and passive, but yeah, that's not his team. Hey, there's a guy at the top wide receiver's dad was would you could probably argue he was okay and he was quiet and passive, at least on the football field, not on the streets of Philly. But Marvin Harrison was uh not <laughs> outspoken and <laughs> he's a Hall of Famer, so I don't know. I, I you know, I don't pay much attention to that. I know that kid he catches the ball at the peak. Got strong hands, and yes, he does run a four three three at six four. So, if you guys ever want to get a really qualified person to break down receiver tape for you, and and to me, I think Steve Smith was one of the best to ever do it as far as his overall game, but his route running ability was second to none, second to none, and he can really detect what he's seeing in these guys, and sometimes he's a little rough on them at times. But sometimes they need to hear that kind of stuff. Trust me when I tell you, those players, those receivers are going to be watching his breakdown, critiquing what uh, Steve Smith is saying about them. And I'm telling you, if you ever want to watch a good qualified receiver breakdown, I'm telling you, watch Steve Smith's breakdown. They are excellent. Just for the record. I concur. I agree 100%, Nomad. Yep. So let uh, you guys, let's take a quick station ID right quick. And on the other side, we're going to get into the conversation about the thumbnail and about Caleb Williams and you know that whole thing on the thumbnail. We're gonna we're gonna break that down the best way we can on the other side of this. The best Chicago Bears content anywhere. You catch Nomad Live pregame one hour prior to kickoff and Nomad at night post game. And every Friday evening at 7 p.m. Central on all the most popular streaming platforms. And only on the Nomad Network. That is right, you guys. Do me a favor. Go pound the crap out of that uh, like button, man. We need you guys to tell this algorithm that we are here and you like the content. It only helps bring more people to us. Um, and if you are new to the channel, anybody that's new to the family, welcome. We appreciate you being here, but do us a favor. Consider hitting the uh, subscribe button on your way out and do it now if you can. It'd be great to actually see some subs go up, man, because we're on a really hard push to get to 2000 and beyond. And also, you guys, I just want you guys to know this. Um, we 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 plan on putting bodies at the uh, training camp this year. This is what we have planned so far, but we are going to need you guys' help. When we need things, we'll ask for it. 
You know, we'll directly ask for it and we'll let you know exactly what it's for. And when we do it, we'll show you what we spent the money on. But we're going to need contributions to send. Um, and we know we're going to help Sean do that. Sean Sierra, he's going to go down there. But we also, I think Chris wants to go to uh, training camp as well. And so what we're going to need is accommodations and a little assistance getting us there for maybe four days, four to seven days, something like that. We haven't come up with a um, with a solid figure yet. Chris is doing some homework on that, seeing what it'll cost to uh, get a hotel. But we would love to see, and I know you guys would love to see, the Nomad Network at Chicago Bears training camp for our very first time. And I would just love to see that for the network. So anything you can do is, as a, a viewer of the show and a supporter of what we do, that would be excellent. That would be excellent because we definitely need to – we're going to get a mark and we're going to try to reach it to a certain date so that we can set the accommodation. I'm asking early so that we can try to get ahead of it. Anything that you can do to help will be great, man, and we will really appreciate that. But we'll get to you with more information in the next couple of days to see how much the accommodation will cost, and we'll put a, we'll put a figure on the screen so you guys can help us reach it at a certain point. But we would definitely appreciate that, you guys, and thank you in advance for anybody that uh, contributes. But uh, let's let's get into this conversation about the thumbnail. The thumbnail reads: It's Caleb Williams with his uh with his phone. And it's a pink phone, and he's got on a uh, nail polish or some kind of I don't know some kind of acrylic. I'm not sure. I don't know what that is on his fingernails. But um, here's what it is for me. I want to preface this conversation and be really clear. And I think I was open about this early. Um, this isn't about someone's blank chuality. Cause we don't know anything about that. We don't know anything about what he does in his private life. It's about, it's about, you know, the presentation, the culture in Chicago and how the fans and everybody, the locker room will greet that. And, and, and you know, as he ingratiates himself with the city, if we get him with the locker room and the fan base and the city of Chicago, I just want to know, and it's, and it's worth having this conversation. Why it's because it's going to, we're going to get there eventually. We're going to get there eventually, whether people like that or not. Whenever it happens, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come up as part of the conversation. It's, it's worth doing it right now. And I'm, I'm prefacing my statements by saying this. I personally, and I've told you guys this live on air, I have a, 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 a half-sister that her sexuality is different than mine. I have a nephew that's really close to me. His sexuality is something different than mine. And um, I... I, I feel a certain way about that conversation. I don't think it's worth really having. I just want to say that in advance before somebody else says something wrong and thinks I'm trying to attack this guy. I'm not. I just want to see if, cause, cause what I know about uh, painted fingernails is the rappers think it's swag. That's what they say it is. The rappers say it's swag. And so we'll start with kids, man. Could it be just that? Kids, and you're on mute. Could it be just that? Is it just swag? Oh, I'm I was just let, letting you get all that out of your out of your system. Now that you got all that out of your system, I, I don't I don't know. I like I don't I'm not a fashion I'm not fashionable really. Like I'm not a fashionable person. I don't follow fashion. I don't I could I could care less. Um personally, as far as I'm concerned, and it really we're talking sexuality. That's his business. What he does is his business. If he wants to come out and tell people what he does, that's his business. I honestly have nothing to do with that. And 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 you know, we're in my opinion, like I'm I'm this is a football show. We're talking football, so let's kind of get back to that. And in doing so, um, you know, I, I also don't care what he wears and what he, you know, what color phone, whether he wants to put lipstick on. That's all his business, right? Like if he he decides to do those things like don't be surprised if he turns around and gets a like it's it's it might be people might think it's flipping or funny but like what are the odds that he doesn't get a maybelline deal and he starts selling acrylic nails to you know I, I, like you're laughing i'm not i'm not i'm not cracking a joke i'm actually being dead serious who's doing that from a male perspective nobody he may be creating his own lane from a fashion perspective and, uh, you know, next thing you know, he is an icon when it comes to he's the Michael Jordan of 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 nail polish. And like that was funny 
But in, in, any, in any event, I'm really not cracking a joke. This is this may be a calculated thing that he's doing, and it may just be that he enjoys doing it. And maybe it's a, 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 a maybe it's his way of saying, "Yo, what's up, mom?" You know, I don't I don't know, but I don't care. I just want him to beat the Packers, go to the playoffs, and win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Go ahead, JTK. Well, all right. I don't know how um, heated you guys want me to get on something like this. Man, so I'm going to kind yourself. of like. Be yourself. Be yourself. Just don't be. I, I'm going I'm to temper it down. Um, first off, it's important to know that him painting his fingernails is uh, for his mom. She owns a, a nail salon, all that. Mm -hmm. it, it really is for his mom. The fact that sexuality is human sexuality is somehow coming out of the conversation because he paints his nails and he has a pink phone case that's disturbing to me the fact that we have gone there that the media has gone there fans have gone there even with what people were calling fans of justin fields that's disturbing that is disturbing speak you know when i grew up people called that hate speech you're hating another person or a type of person and you're making some connection because he paints his nails as as you know because of his mom because he loves his mom cares about his mom and then changing that into a, a his sexuality or questioning his sexuality i mean dennis robin wore a wedding dress at his book signing <laughs> like are you kidding me and we're just talking about this kid's fingernails being painted like oh like I'll, I'll 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 leave it at that i just want to say that it has nothing to do with his character his sexuality his personality how great he can be as a chicago bears quarterback and that last part is the most important thing what ked says beat the packers win a playoff game get to the super bowl win the super bowl become a dynasty let's effing go Let's f and go, bro. That's go all that matters to me. I don't care what you what he's wearing. Go and ahead. that was the soft version. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Brian. And now's when Nomad gets a little bit nervous. No, now I the mean, old grizzled guy. I got a fear. <laughs> Come on, Chris. Chris, you got to do it, Chris. No, I, I'll tell you what. In all honesty, this is slipping. In, in, in my 60 years, it wasn't that long ago, it, probably before you guys' lifetime, in the 70s, when a guy wore long hair, he was whatever name. And then in the early 80s, when a guy wore an e earring, he got called that name. It's an attention. It's trying to figure out your own identity identity when it comes to me any entertainer and i don't care if that's sports movie star singer tv whatever i want two things i want them to give me their best effort they have for that day and stay out of the police blotter anything else is not my business or concern so, so here, here's what i think is here's what i think because um and and I think depending on what social media uh, space you, you frequent, I think it's different. Like like Twitter or X, it is an absolute s-hole country in itself. It is a terrible place to really judge cool. it, to really judge what you know what people socially think about something because because Elon Musk has opened that place up to the worst kinds of people you can imagine walking. I mean, just like people that just need to go back in a cave and just stay there, strike rocks and, and create fire like you did when you were in caves. I mean, just awful people on that platform. I mean, just awful people. And that's a bad way to determine what society thinks about something. Um, you go on different spaces, threads, Facebook, uh, different platforms, Instagram, and you see a whole lot more of an understanding conversation than you know than your typical uh stereotypical conversation and and you know i'm like j2k man i i don't care i really don't man it's just his business 
you know, people were saying that, you know, the whole pink thing was about him supporting women's basketball and stuff like that. I heard that. Um, but it just doesn't matter to me, man. I, I don't care. But here's why I think it gets dicey, guys. And I'm going to let you guys respond to this. Um, I think it's uh -oh. conditional for the fan base. I think it's all conditional when it comes to the, to some of our fans. I ain't going to say all of them. But the it won't be a problem if he's winning. But if he starts taking L's, if he starts taking L's and a bunch of them, and it starts to look bad for him, guaranteed that's going to hit the forefront of the conversation. Wow. Even Justin Fields and like some of his fashion swag didn't really hit right when, when he was losing either, right? So I don't like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold that against kid. He again, wear whatever you want, bro. Just win, bro. <laughs> I don't really care if that's what the kids are doing today. Sure, maybe I'm just an old fart. I've been called worse, but you know, do what it is that you want to do. You do you. You got a lot more money than I do. Just, just come, you know, come to practice prepared to play football and ice the world, put the world on notice. That's all. That's all that really matters to me, you know. And this is, you know, these things are part and parcel as to why I sit down and I say that Ryan Poles should do his due diligence. You have to have a full understanding of the character and caliber of character that you bring into the table. Same token, sounds to me like. Sounds to me like he's fine with the caliber of person that is coming to Chicago, and in that respect, I'm uh, I'm fully behind the guy. Do what you do what you need to do, get the guy in the building, get the right guy in the building, and let him cook, man. And I uh, I can't wait to see it. J2K. Yeah, and to further talk about Caleb Williams, um, you know, if he wasn't photographed at that women's basketball game, which you know. WNBA right now is blowing up because the college girls are, are 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 playing so well and and that's starting to grow. <clears throat> if he wasn't photographed there, if if he his fingernails the F Utah wasn't photographed outside of that stuff, what else is there? I'm, or the crying on the mom's shoulder. But outside of that, there isn't. Um, you know, he's not getting arrested. He's he's not. Um, Getting arrested for guns or speeding or DWI, um, you, you don't see these kind of uh, negative traits that you see with other players. Like if you guys remember Tank Johnson, who bears defensive tackle when we had Lovey Smith, you know he got arrested and his house got raided and he had all these guns. His best friend William Posey um, was also arrested and two nights later he was shot. You know at a club what with tank johnson and killed you know that's the character problems we should be worried about caleb painting his fingernails because his mom owns a salon come on you guys well i i i brought it to the table <laughs> so that so that i thought it was worth doing now rather than rather than later why because when it when it comes down to it see it, this is what i see happening down the line it's, he'll, he'll go into a three or four game stretch where he doesn't play well as most rookies do. And he'll, he'll hit that rookie, he'll hit that rookie wall. And all of that stuff is going to hit the forefront. So you can, you can, I won't, I won't care to bring that up and make that part of why that happened. But I guarantee you some of these same podcasters that are, that are sitting here rooting this kid on, they're going to turn on him. Some of these reporters, they're going to turn on them. And that's going to be part of what they do to get clicks. We're doing it now, and I'm having to try to trying to have the most honest, upfront conversation with you guys as I possibly can, and not try to pass judgment on anybody for anything because there's nothing to pass judgment about, in my opinion. It's just the way. I mean, he could turn out to be the most brilliant uh, uh, strategist and an advertiser in the world. Now, you know what I mean. What he's doing could be brilliantly setting him up for hundreds of millions of dollars and just to get people excited. You know what I mean? Just being different. I don't have no problem with that. Dennis Rodman made tens of millions off of it in that market. What he, what this kid can make in this market, we're talking about in the hundred million range. Just off being different. You know what I mean? So here, here is my story. Yeah. That I'm gonna, 
that I promised to tell J2K in uh, in the green room in high school. And so I was, you know, I was a prom king. Um, no, not that year. I wasn't the prom king that year. I think I was, that was my junior year. But I was I, I was part of the court, right? <clears throat> and so I just I, I've always been one of those people who see other people go one direction. And I decide to go the other because I just I see too many people taking that path. It's just like, eh, that's boring. Why does everybody do the same thing all the damn time? And so here it was time to go get the tux. You know, you got to get fitted and, you know, get your stuff right. And, you know, everybody was wearing the, you know, we had to all wear white tuxes. Nobody could get out of that. Everybody that was on the court had to have a white tux, right? And so can't get out of that. But they didn't tell me that I couldn't change the color of my shirt underneath. And so everybody else had the white shirt underneath and doing all that stuff, the same bubble gum stuff that everybody else does. Kids, you can help me out with the chat. And here I was, I, I'm, I'm looking at the, um, the rack of wingtips, and I see this pink shirt. I see this pink shirt, cummerbond and all. And so I just, immediately when I saw it, I knew that I wanted to be different. I wanted to get it. I wanted to make a, basically, it was just a, uh, it was for shock value. I just wanted to see what would happen if I, you know, went away from the regular mainstream of what everybody else was doing. And I got it, and my, my homeboy saw it the first time before everybody else got to see it. He was just like, man, you wild. You always doing something crazy and different, man. You wild. I was like, man, I'm going to see what everybody say when we go out, when people see it. And so I go in there, and, you know, all eyes are on me. I take off my jacket. All eyes are on me. But not a one person said nothing to me. The only people that said, said something to me were females, and they were just talking about how fly I was. You know, you 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 all do, and you can, you can get away with that. Not everybody can get away with that. People were saying that to me, and so what I was what I had to say about this is I did that in high school, my junior year in high school, and it was an absolute shocker to everybody in there. Nobody in that picture had on a pink a pink wingtip shirt in their in their tuxedo, and so I can I can dig the fact that this kid may be doing things just for shock value. Because he wants to be different. Can can you fathom that? Anybody can anybody else fathom that? He just likes yeah, to see he, out and be different. Yeah. yeah, he thinks he's special. Honestly, you know, he he thinks he's going to be a great Hall of Fame superstar quarterback, and he thinks he's special. So he does things that are out of the norm. You know, I mean, that's just a characteristic. I mean, look at you know the lead singer of a rock band, right? You know, it doesn't change like their sexuality because they, you know, they've got tons of piercings and their hair's wild and it's colored or anything like that. All these kind of things. No, they're just, they're, he's the front of the team being the quarterback and, and he thinks he's special. And, you know, honestly, like, I think he's special too. And really quick, I just wanted to say something. Ten Bears in the chat was saying defend him and his fumbles and record versus the top 25 teams in college. And this is the point that this is a good exercise where we can get all this garbage out, this media hype garbage out. And we can get back to talking about football and we can talk about football, uh, Caleb Williams, the football player, not Caleb Williams, the media guy, the Hollywood kid. Because I, I, I really don't think he's going to be that. He's young. He's going to go to Chicago. He's going to learn that Chicago is a tough city. It's not the West Coast. And he's going to grow from that. And I and I think it's going to make him a better person and a better player overall. I agree, man. I, I, I don't know quite what to think of it. I just choose not to think about it and just let the cat be him, you know, for whatever it's worth to him. And, uh, we're going we're gonna to get out of this comp. We'll, we'll let anybody else that has anything else to say about that speak to it. Brian, if you got anything else to add, kids, go right ahead. Nothing that hadn't already been said. Go ahead, kid. I, I could go on for days on it, but it's, it is honestly the silliest thing. Um, you know, the, the, the kids, kids being paid to do a job. I just want them to come in and go to work. That's it. Come in, go to work, be prepared for work, 
what you do when you, you know, when you sign off of work, bro, that's on you. And I'll be watching you every Sunday when you show up to the office. All right. How about this, guys? We'll start with, and I, I'm just jumping to J2K and going right to Brian because, you know, I didn't, I didn't ask Keith to come on tonight. I want to apologize to Keith because the Bishop thought that, you know, I, I didn't want him to take it personally, but I just wanted people to know that the last time J2K was here, I don't think we gave him enough runway and Brian is always behind the scenes and he never gets enough runway. He wants to be heard. So we have so many personalities and really strong personalities. I felt like I needed to pull some back just so that these guys would be able to uh, speak their minds. And I, it's, I hope he understands that. I, I hope the bishop didn't take that the wrong way. But uh, how about this, guys? J2K, I don't think I got a chance to ask you this yet. What do you think about what Poles has done thus far? Are you Have you reached a phase where you accept what he's done and you look forward to what, what he's going to do in the future? And do we do it? Does it appear that we're in a good place? Yes, absolutely. I I actually I really like what Ryan Poles has done. I think uh, to preface this is that football fans, NFL fans, we look at our team and we look our GMs moves and we make a decision on that. We don't look around the league to see you know how many other <clears throat> great GMs who have built great teams have had misses. Right. So, you know, like Sky Moore over in Kansas City, like that was, in my opinion, a bit of a miss. They went and drafted Rashid Rice. And while he had a, a decent year, I think he was more fair, force fed the ball than, than him having a lot of upside. So I think when, when you look at Ryan Poles, you have to compare him to other GMs, other teams, and then make it, make a judgment on it. Because there are some misses that Poles has, has had. I think Velas Jones, I think Tyler Scott to an extent. I think he's still young enough that he could grow a little bit more. But the way he's rebuilt this team in two years... He tore down the team in one year, but in two years, he's rebuilt this team. And I think we have a playoff caliber defense. I think we were a few games from making the playoffs last year, um, had coaching and a few plays gone our way. Um, so overall, I really like what Poles is, is doing. Um, I think his, his draft picks and his how he signs free agents um, is this long-term approach uh, is really evident. I think he's got it really like nailed it, nailed down, dialed in from his time with Kansas City. <clears throat> there was a a graph that I saw that was talking about guaranteed money um, and money spent into the future on current players. Kansas City was one of the lowest, and the Bears are one of the lowest. They're actually the two lowest in the league. So everything he's doing right now is he's building through the draft, filling with free agent without compromising the future. I love it. What about you, Brian? Yeah, I was going to bring up uh, what he's done with the cap and just two years. I mean, you think about what the first year they was 90 plus million in dead cap money. And I mean, now, well, for two years in a row, uh, surplus if not being the top in the top five in cap space it is phenomenal and i like uh this past year being able to sign uh johnson and commit two guys that he did not draft uh rewarded them with an extension i think speaks volumes for the team that hey you do your job and you're going to get rewarded well, I mean, what employee don't want that? I don't care what your job is. Uh, is polls perfect? No. Is anybody? No. Uh, I'm more than ha he's got a lot more hits than he has misses. And I, this draft is going to be really interesting because he's always able to maneuver and get several draft picks. And I don't think he does it this year. He may pull off a trade or two to get 
more than four, but I don't think it's going to be 10 and 11 like he's done in the past. And I'm just, I want to see how he turns those picks as far as the players that he gets in the position that he fills. So, so the, the base question, go ahead, kids, because you didn't get a chance to respond to that. No, you, you go. Keep going. No, no, no. I, all I wanted to do was I just wanted to see, based on everything that's happened, do you, you know, we, we turned down a plethora of picks to, to uh, you know, get a quarterback that this cat really believes in, I think. Um, do you think that's that we're on the right path, you know, putting, putting all the plethora of picks to the side and him taking this route, do you think he's on the right path by doing that? Yes. There, there's, there, you know, there was a couple of different ways to skin this cat. This is the way that he decided to skin it. Um, I don't, at this present time, I don't really see any problems with what he's done. He, he, he's, he's, he's bringing in a fresh new quarterback for the fan base to get optimistic about once more. And I think that's kind of where we need to, you know, need our headspace to be. Um, you know, get behind the new quarterback, get behind the moves that he's done, and uh, hopefully, again, we'll see positive results you know in 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 a couple of months i'm good with it i got a couple uh questions i think i can't remember who just asked that somebody asked me do, do you think polls will pass up uh neighbor hell no right off the top i can't remember who asked that but i, I apologize for that hell no uh illinois jones did verse come in for a 30 visit i don't think so i haven't heard that if he did i haven't heard about that um you know do I think polls is on the right track? I'm going to pass on my own virtues on what I thought he should have done. I've, I've foregone that probably three days after he traded Justin Fields. It was time to move on from that. And I'm going to stick to that by saying, you know what? Let's roll with it. Let's roll with it, fellas. Let's roll with it. The season is right around the corner. Training cap is right around the corner. And we as Bears fans, what can you do? I'm going to bleed black and me uh, blue and orange regardless. Regardless, you come in my house, you're going to know that. I'm going to be a Bears fan regardless, whether it's Justin Fields or who the hell else is the quarterback here. Caleb Williams, I don't care nothing about all that nonsense people are talking about. If he thinks Caleb Williams is an upgrade over Justin Fields, I, you know, I can have my feelings about it, but I'm going to still root on this cat. And so I'm going to, I'm going to say, Let's 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 see where he's going with this, man. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt, like we did, like we did since he's gotten here. Give him the benefit of the doubt, for whatever reasons he made the decisions that he made. I think he explained himself pretty well, and I think as fans, I think we'll just do ourselves good justice by allowing him the space and the latitude to do what he he needs to do to to uh, bring this thing to where it needs to to uh, go. Um, I think we can complain, we can criticize, we can be fair about it too, all at the same time. I, I just I just want to see what happens, man. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge it until I see the results. When he's done cooking his meal, Flus is done cooking his meal and he serves it, we can judge after that. But I like to be honest with you, I think he uses his uh cap space well. I think he went and signed good uh free agents. I think the uh when you look at Caleb's William. Caleb Williams is mechanics and his release. It's definitely an upgrade from what Justin Fields brought to the table. As far as that aspect of it goes, the rest of it is out there to be determined. Everything else is out there to, to be determined. I'm going to back off of him and let this guy play football. Let him get down. Let's see what he brings to the table. I think he's got enough to cook early. I think he's got enough to cook early and get games, get wins. I'm not saying he's got, he's got enough to be an average quarterback. I, I think he can get wins early and often. I, I quite frankly think that. I think the system is set for him to do that, and we haven't even drafted four more players yet. And so before we get into this last conversation that I wanted to bring up, anybody else on, on what I just said? Do you guys agree, disagree with what I just said? I agree. Um, well, I'll jump in. I think you're, you're right on. And to add to that, I think there are two good paths. One, you keep Justin Fields, you get the hall, you get to surround him with talent. And I think that was a good path to take because I did like Justin Fields. Caleb Williams, 
you draft a guy with what I think is a very high ceiling um, and you get to save so much money over the next five years with this quarterback, you can again surround him with talent. You can build out this team. We still have that ninth pick where we can get a defensive end or a wide receiver who can be a superstar and they're on a five-year contract. I don't think there was necessarily a, a bad road to take. It's just hard for fans who love Justin Fields, who loved when we drafted him, like finally we got our quarterback. No more Mitch Trubisky, no more Rex Grossman, no more Cade McNown kind of draft picks. And now we're on to Caleb Williams. So, you know, there was a feeling of a letdown because we thought we had that guy. We're doing it again, but with someone who is easily the highest quality quarterback we've ever drafted going to the highest quality NFL team that has ever drafted a number one quarterback. What we have right now is special and people should let go of their feelings and look towards the future. Caleb Williams, this team, our cap space. This is unique and it's special. So get excited. Go ahead, Brian. You want to speak to that? There's really not much that I can add other than, uh, yeah, let's see what the kid can do. And, yeah, I, I've been rooting the team for over 50 years. That's, you know, 30 years before Caleb or Justin was born. Uh, I'm not going to stop liking the Bears now. Uh, you know, if you're going to, you know, say you support the team, you support the team. And, you know, it, it's not exactly the way I would have done it, but there's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to support the team. Go ahead, kid. All right. My little, my little two cents on this is, is in, and my little criticism for Ryan Pulse is just timing is all right. In, in my opinion, if he was, if he had, if he had conviction on Caleb Williams earlier into all of this, he may have made a coaching change. He may have saved, you know, gotten more for Justin Fields in, in by way of a trade, and he would have saved the fan base from a little bit of uh, a little bit of heartache. That's that's my opinion on it. At the end of the day, uh, I think he's done what he feels is the best thing for this organization, and we're gonna watch it play out there through the course of the season, and that's why we love football. And Ked's really quick, just um, I wonder how much of that was actually out of Poles' control with Caleb Williams not taking the medical. Had he taken the medical at the combine, Poles might have pulled the trigger on Justin much earlier. I, I, I still think I, I still think even earlier than that, right? Like I, I, I feel that if if you're gonna if you're gonna make a decision on coaching you may, you know, you might want to take a look at the entire case scenario as a whole, right? And I think he kind of piecemealed, piecemealed that maneuver. He got rid of Getze, kept the quarterback, if only temporarily, and then replaced the offensive staff. It was just a little bit weird to me, especially the the, the retaining of, um, of Eberflus in that situation. My thoughts again, if, if, if it was me, and I'm basically over the quarterback. I get rid of the quarterback. I, I get rid of the head coach. I get rid of the offensive coordinator. I bring in a whole new staff. Likely, uh, it would likely be Jim Harbaugh. And, uh, you know, that, that's that's what I would do. But um, it would have been much – it would have been earlier than the medical case scenario. I, I, I would have come – I would have come to my decision on Justin Fields much sooner. So you, you felt that Fields should have gone when Getze – was sent packing in yeah, essence. I, I I think I think he should have come to again a conviction in and around then. This way he can get the most back for for the quarterback trade at that time. Because at that time nobody had selected all their quarterbacks. He traded Justin well after, you know, after all the quarterbacks had basically already settled and fallen to where they were going to go. Uh, but you know that's 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 me nitpicking uh, you know a, a, a situation in the past at this point doesn't make much difference but that's that's 
Yeah. Those are the little the little issues that I have with how polls went about it. But again, this is all playing for him in real time. And, uh, you know, I get to sit here and just watch it. And all I right. love being a fan. Kids, if you can do me a favor, I am going to rub my hand. You can hear it. You can hear me rubbing my hand. If you can grab the chat for me. What you. I'm about to do is nowhere near Chicago Bears related. It's not even anywhere near football related. This uh -oh. is bad at night, and our plan is to have conversations on here that are not quite always football related. I don't even know why we still have our brand up that has the background of Nomad Live, but I'm about, I'm about I'm about to change that as I'm talking to you guys and put another background up overlay. Um, but hey, guys, there's a lunar eclipse. A full solar eclipse coming tomorrow. What do you guys what do you guys think about that? And 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 we're gonna get a little bit, I'm gonna get into a little bit of a conversation about it because it has a, a spiritual meaning for me. Um, I just want to see, I know my guy kids, kids is my brother. I've gotten to know him a whole lot better in this last month or so than I ever got to know him the whole time we've been rocking shows together. I consider kids my brother, man. We don't always see things in alignment, but that is my brother right there. And he's a deep thinker. I know you've got, I know you've you've thought into this uh solar eclipse a little bit more than the uh peanut butter and jelly way of, that everybody else is thinking of this. Give me your thoughts on the uh solar eclipse and the timing of it and how people are responding to it. Yeah, peanut butter jelly, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All that a baseball bat. Um, I, I, look, I, I, I don't. I'm a weird individual when it comes to things that are in the sky. And I'm just gonna say some dumb stuff, and I'll throw it down to J2K. I tend not to look into the sky. I like to focus on the horizon. This way, I see what's coming at me, and what I'm going towards. And uh, if it's if it's happening. In the sky, I have no control over it, so I just try to mind my own business. So uh, I think the moral of the story is, on the eighth of of April, do yourself a favor and try not to be looking in the sky. Oh, uh, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna just look up at it like like Trump, bro. Some people I hear people go blind. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm trying not. I'm trying not to go blind. I like to keep all of my sight. The second leading forward. cause of blindness. Well, I don't know if that's true, Brian, but I, I you know, e either way, I'm not going to test the theory. I will be looking towards the horizon. J2K. J2K. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to respond. Honestly, um, I think, look, if you have a connection to something and you feel something, it's valid, right? So whatever you're sensing, Nomad, whatever you're feeling around this time, it's valid because no matter what you believe, if you believe in it, it will affect you, <laughs> right? Sorry, um, and, wait a second. I'm not, what's that? <laughs> I got to put up the, the easily. There's, and there's been, there's been, some good, there's been some good chats today. You you know exactly which one to put up. I got to put it up, the scrolls. The scrolls, this well, one. No, definitely. no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Just oh, say Oh, come it. on now. You want to it's, speak it's to if it's, you want to speak to don't put it on the screen, man. Don't put it on the screen. Everybody can take a joke. No. Just, no Especially it's on a show like today's show. It's monetized. No. You can't put it on the screen. Just speak to it. I can't. I can't. <laughs> All right. So, so either so I do it or I don't do it. Uh, if you then know what he's trying to say it. is don't look directly at it. It'll change your sexuality is what he's trying to say. <laughs> oh. Oh, hilarious. Um, That's what yeah, happened to my house. Like, I think it's a I think it's a great phenomenon. I don't know enough about that um, side of belief systems, how much the planets and the stars affect us. Um, I'm probably a little more of an analytic person. Um, I like to kind of tell people that you know at, you know this year is really special because at the end of the year, December 30, 31st, all the planets align right in a row. Did you guys know that? Yes, yes, I did. And you know what? You know what happens every year on December thirty first? All the planets align right in a row. 
It happens every year. So now whether that affects you or if you connect to that, that's cool. That's awesome. Um, but I really don't know. I'm I'm not that end of the science arena to to speak on that. But I do think it's special. You know, we look through history and we look through eclipses, and um, it's incredibly well documented. I actually just saw a thing that we figured out from the Assyrians that July fifteenth, we brought it down to the specific day that they had a major eclipse, and within days. They overthrew the ruler because they thought that this is time to kill the the king and start a whole new government body. So as humans, we have treated treated this with. Um, so what you're saying is we should overthrow the government, right? Because there's an eclipse. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah uh, April eighth. Told you I was a deep thinker. Yeah, yeah. Jan six <laughs> is the ne- is the new April eighth, right? No, of course not. <laughs> oh man, J two K. And this is not just to J two K. Let me talk to everybody on the panel and everybody on the show. Everybody chatting right now. Here's something very interesting. There's a company called CERN. C E R N. I bet you guys didn't know that they are going to launch. I don't. I, you know what? I don't know if CERN is responsible for this or the United States military is responsible for this, but there's reportedly going to be three rockets launched directly into the eclipse. Three rockets that we supposedly have the uh, ability and the and rockets with this kind of distance. We're talking about millions of miles away. What you talking about, Willis? I'm talking about they're firing three rockets into the eclipse. Did you see this but- on The Onion? website oh no 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 that's so we're gonna blow up the moon wait 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 stop stop no, no mad. wait 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 stop i'm just telling no you no wait no mad no mad tell what? us what makes the eclipse well, well a damn moon i mean a, a moon or some people say a whole, whole planet covers the sun okay so yeah. how do they shoot something into that just look it up and see if you can find news on it. You're a producer. I'd much rather hear you explain it. I'm not going to explain it since, <laughs> you're <laughs> since I'm me a smarty too. pants. That's entertainment I'm right there, dog. Just, just look it up, Chris. Chris, Chris is going to find it. He's going to see exactly. Y'all going to see exactly what I'm talking about. Because when I heard about it, I was absolutely flabbergasted. But I was just looking at stuff on YouTube. I'm just like, until I see it on a major network talking about it, then I can't believe it. Now I saw it on CNN. I was just like, whoa, what the what the black is this going on? It was it was crazy. The fact that they're fine. And so it got into, you know, the whole conversation on the internet turns into they're trying to open up some kind of portal, right? It's deep. It's deep. I, I don't know how deep I can get into it, but to, to hear stuff, why are they firing uh three rockets into an eclipse? Explain. Oh, I found it. Let's just say let's just say. It susses out, and, he, and they actually are doing that, J2K. Okay. Why, J2K, why would they be smart. doing that? They're they're smashing protons. Okay, so they're using the Hadron Collider is what you're saying. No, 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 no. They are sending rockets um, during the solar eclipse, and um, because there's a momentary dim of protons, so protons come from photons, photons come from the sun, right? And because there's a momentary dim of protons, for some reason within their experiment, um, they're able to basically smash a proton. And then when you smash a proton, you get, you know, the nucleus and you get all the electrons out of it. And the way it explodes and tells you kind of the nature of the proton. So they're trying to create a black hole, bro. That's what Well, well. Yeah, the LHC, it's like it's basically like the Large Hydrogen Collider, but we're actually physically doing this in space. In so, space. Yeah, you're, you're, so they're yeah. trying to create a black hole. Well, Holy the Large soil. Hydrogen Collider or can't open a portal or open a it, portal. It can't create a black hole. There it's it, that's a myth. Um, but it is a what part you, of the quote god particle, the his his bows boson, the Higgs, Higgs boson. boson. Yeah. 
um, that we're we're searching for and all that stuff. So it's a part of that experiment. And because the protons are at a low level, apparently they have some experiment that can smash a proton through this process. Yo, the scrolls is on fire today, bro. The scrolls is like straight up. Who authorized this? Yeah. Who 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 signed it's off European, on this European. one? This is a European organization. Oh, is this is your, this is in Europe. Yeah. Can, hey, yeah. excuse me, guys. Can we talk about pink uh, fingernails again? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. I I just want to know because first of all, I don't even know because I know Chris. Chris, jump back in there, please, if you could. Because I I know that that this thing is supposed to um be visual directly, right directly in his uh path line. I know we're supposed to be able to see it here in Illinois, where I'm at. Um, I don't know what time I'm supposed to be looking. Does anybody it's know? Like four, it's four o'clock Eastern time, I think. Four around four o'clock. I don't know. My son called me and asked so, me was so I going three to o'clock I, thought, time, like I told him weeks. if it gets too dark, I might go to sleep. So, so three <laughs> o'clock our time, Chris. Yes, I'm <laughs> Eastern time. Me and kids are in the Eastern. Yo, the, the best time. The chat is bumping right now. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> All y'all football heads is like, what the hell are they trying to do out there in the sky? <laughs> What oh, and one more that? thing. I just I'm reading a little bit more. This makes a little more sense. Is that because the solar eclipse causes less photons, protons to hit Earth? They're basically they're studying the effects of that because the potential of solar flares that mm -hmm. could knock out our satellites. So that's actually where the experiment is coming from. They're trying to de determine how much of an effect photons or solar flare would affect our communication systems on earth and they're taking advantage of the solar eclipse window of this ionosphere disturbance to figure out what it is hmm. if you guys ever want me for science night <laughs> hey hey i'm with you have to lean on you like j2k I'm more, bro more into the life sciences myself, myself j2k I, I slept on it nomad at night and I'm getting a big bang theory. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nomad, you're just being silly and I won't stand for it. Michael Jackson ain't happy. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Uh, so I just like to say sometimes you, as human beings, sometimes you just need to know when to leave, leave good, you know, well enough alone. There's certain things that don't need to be messed with. You don't have to create a black hole in the sky when an eclipse is happening. You don't have to do that. <laughs> That's right. not an imperative it's, thing to do. Crazy. You could do other things. You could, you could, you know. I don't. There's so many other things you could do. I don't. Have think you guys heard about means, uh, audio levitation? Audio levitation by sound. How, yeah. How can you? Use, how can you use sound to levitate? They're doing it. Who's? Yeah. There? So. Right Sick now, okay. so they're. Do I don't know if you guys want me to get into this. It's no man at night, so why not? But they well, basically they built a box where they they pump the the sound waves into, and they're able to actually levitate things to their design, so they can control it. And they've created like these images. So like one they did was a white rabbit, the first one. Now the second experiment they did is because this is a, basically a solid square box, it's easy to do. But how do you do it over basically terrain? So they then created a box that had terrain, multiple different levels of stuff and textures. And they created this butterfly out of sand that flapped around in this box. Yeah. That is <laughs> <laughs> that is no, well, you think of it as sound. Is sound is just pressure. That's all sound is. All audio is is just pressure. You know, SPL sound pressure. So well, if, you, pressure. if you can, if you can, you know, magnify enough of it into one direction, yeah. Have you guys I'm ever seen? Have you ever guys seen the military weapons they use that are, are audio, where they blast out the sound and? Like they make people shit their pants. Oh. oh yeah, it makes them just totally they're they're helpless. They doing it in Cuba. Yeah, oh, Chris doing it in Cuba. Oh well, yeah, they, they've been doing it, but I mean it's the same kind of the same concept. Right. Well, like 
He's, why don't they release stuff like that, though? Can't what do you mean? Like that, the like information? No, I mean, like, or that should be out on the market. People should be able to shoot people with, with you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm, if I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to murder people. Well, that's good to say. You know what I'm it's saying? It's all right if someone else. If I'm in an altercation, I'm going sideways. I, this this just me. turned into uh, Nomad at Night behind the scenes, the green room. But episode. follow me. I'm not. You know, I'm not trying to hurt people. But if we have like an altercation and I can force you to poop your pants, that's I, that. I'm in. I'm interested. I'll put some money on that. I, I will invest. Can't we do it. That's hey, people, kids, we should call because it. it's non-lethal. It. People would do it all the time for no reason. They just yeah, it would just be it. like yeah. you'd be walking through the mall, and then now, yeah. now you're now, yeah. now you got to clean. Somebody in that sack of White God. Castles. I don't make them crap their pants. Hey, hey, hey kids, we <laughs> ought to we ought to rename this show Nomad at Night Files or Nomad at Night Zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that up to you, dog. I'm I'm just saying I, I right. would be I would be all in for a poop gun as a the, as opposed to putting people in, in I just in, want to in, know in what kind of pressure polls is. Do you draft an offensive guy at nine or a defensive guy at nine? That's the only pressure I've Oh, I thought you were talking about the pressure of dropping a number two, but uh, we're talking about <laughs> no. number nine. I'm with you, Brian. Uh, I say yes. a Jared verse at nine. I tell you what, guys, let's do this, man, because we just had a hell of a conversation. And I hope that we did the conversation some justice. I believe that we did. I think it was worth having now as opposed to later and being in judgment of a guy that that if he starts to lose and take a series of L's, I'd rather have this conversation had now than to use that because it's what's going to look like. It's, it's going to look like people are going to want to use that against him if he starts taking uh, L's early in the season talking about Caleb Williams. I'm glad that we had this conversation and for the people who, you know, rushed the judgment about what the conversation was going to be about. If you stayed to listen, thank you for doing that and hearing us out because I think it was worth doing it. Um, I hope that, that as this season uh, starts to enter, we can all, we can actually get some nomad network people to the training camp. So please, with the contribution. So, Kev, before before I give you guys a, a start talking about pleasantries, can you give our contribution some highlight? I think we got one from King Booker World. We did indeed. King Booker World's right there with all of us. My man, King. Ball on the field, King Booker World, talking about Caleb Williams. Private time is his. Don't care. Couldn't have said it better myself. For two dollars, I'm so in. Right. Caleb, do you do you, bro? You do whatever it is you want to do. You hug up your dog, dog. You hug up your mom. You 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 do whatever you want to do with your with your you know your, your fashionables, bro. Once it comes Sunday, all that's we want right. to see is win, 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 no matter what. That's, that's it. right, King. It don't matter what the hell. I don't care nothing about his private business. What he do behind closed doors is his damn business. Get on the field, get it, get it in. That's all. It really shouldn't matter. All that other stuff is for the birds to me, you know. Just get it in when you get on the field. Appreciate you, King, man. Appreciate everything you do for us. But go ahead, kids. Let's give out some pleasantries, man. Well, chat, it's been a, it's been an interesting, it's been an interesting chopping up today, man. We 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 really went through some, you know, we went through Caleb Williams, we went through pink phones and pink lip gloss, and we went through the number Was it nine. Interesting? Was it interesting? And, and and, and and the Hadron Collider and and poop guns. I, I really got. I got to get me. A, I, 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 I got to get me a poop gun. I don't know about the rest of y'all. Uh, uh, <laughs> shout outs to everybody in the chat. No maniacs. Thanks for ho holding it down with us on a Sunday night. I'm gonna see what I can do to get myself one of them gats and uh, see sharp, bro. What do you got to say? Shout out to everybody who came out to support us. No man, I'd still like to hear you explain that. Uh, hey, I think I think J2K did it for was my favorite part of the yeah, show. I, I wanted you to do it. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I oh, flat out don't get it, you know, because I've been in the weeds about it, man. They're talking yeah, about you've been in the weeds, all right. Hey, they <laughs> open up. <laughs> and then a little bit of that too. Oh, but they're the talking about unicorn. Yeah, the the you've been in the weeds and the trees. Uh, hey, but hey. Shout out to everybody who joined the sports tonight, guys. Hit the like, share, subscribe button. 
Um, you know, we appreciate your support. Um, all the guys, J2K, man, it's good talking to you again. You, it's always education when you come on, man. Brian, love you, guy. Kids, my man. And Mr. Nomad, Professor Nomad, I love you too, sir. Mr. Mr. Nomad, Mr. Nomad Spock. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, J2K. Yeah, thanks for having me on, you guys. I absolutely love being on with you and chat, chatting about football and all the other weird stuff we get into. It's always a, a blast for me. And uh, thanks to the chat. You guys are always rocking and rolling with me, um, whether it's just me in the chat or on the show or with Nomad and the guys. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys. And thanks. Thanks again. I hope uh, everybody has a great week. And um, let's go. Go ahead, Brian. Well, thanks all the no maniacs for showing up and staying on. Uh, I, I knew it was going to be an interesting episode, and I wasn't disappointed. The only thing I wish I would have thought of, since we're talking football and then we got talking about Eclipse, why couldn't we merge and send a couple of Chicago's finest reporters straight into that Eclipse? If they're going to shoot something at, at it, Leave the rockets alone and fire a couple of them reporters into the into the sun. Fire them into the sun, he says. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a few I names a on the of list. Mine too. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I got a couple of mine. Trust me. You know. But anyway, than... anyway, thanks a lot, everybody. And if this is your first time here, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe, like. Uh, See you tomorrow, because I'm sure tomorrow's going to be an interesting episode as well. Love you guys. Appreciate that, Brian. Hey, do me a favor. I just, just want to see what happens. Give me, can we count 20 people while I'm finishing out this uh, outro and giving you guys my pleasantries? Can we get, let's say 10. Let's get 10 people and give me a thumbs up when you do it so we can give you a shout out. 10 people to share this uh, live stream right now while we're still live on the air. I'm just asking for 10 people to share this live screen and we'll shout you out right after I'm done giving my pleasantries. But here we go. Let's start right now. Give me a thumbs up when you did it, once you did it. Um, here, here's, I want to talk specifically about what we talked about tonight. I thought it was, uh, like I said before, I thought it was worth having the conversation and I'll be short about that. I'm going to wait and see what he brings to the table as a Bears quarterback. I'm not going to overjudge the situation. I'm not going to even judge polls. I'm going to wait until the meal is cooked and they serve the meal. And I'm going to taste it. And if it's good, I'm going to finish eating it. And we're going to enjoy it. When, once I start, if I taste it and it's no good, I'm going to push that plate away from me and we're going we're gonna to analyze this thing. But if it's good, you keep eating the meal and you finish it and you ask for seconds. Bring me some more of that, right? That's, what, that's, that's just where I'm at in my space inside of me. Spiritually, I don't have a whole lot of negative vibes, if any. And I'm 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 a preface what I'm it was a bearish conversation right on into this whole thing with the uh eclipse. There's a lot of people that's taking this re really, really serious. I'm not gonna take it as serious mo as as most people. But what I want to say this about this is being spiritually aligned. And it goes to, and I'm gonna give you guys in the chat a whole lot of credit for being good spirited people and when you come in this chat you set a tone for the community that we're trying to build and i i just want you to guys you guys know this personally i really appreciate you guys and i know the guys on the on the network really appreciate you guys being that way um i don't vibe well with negativity when people come on this network and they insist on being negative about any and everything we decide to uh discuss as a topic i don't like it and quite frankly, we don't have to put up with it. And so if you find yourself on the outside looking in of the network, just trust and believe me, it's, it doesn't come easily. You know, I'm I'm not going to block people unless I feel like we have to. You know, I, I would rather people come in here and have their opinions and do it on a regular basis every time we do a show. But if you insist on coming in here, bringing negative energy to what we do, I'm just going to assume you're trying to bring everybody down. And for that, I won't have you on the show again. You can do that from a distance on somebody else's podcast, talk crap about the Nomad Network all you want to, 
but you won't be welcome here to do that because these people that come to our show every week and show us all this support, they are certainly keeping community standards and being positive about everything that we talk about. And I really appreciate them for that. So hell no, I'm not going to let you come in here and be negative. Some of you people, I'm, I'm, I got questions about who you are. I got suggestions. We talk about this stuff behind the scenes. I won't say it live, but we got ideas on who we think some of these people are. And I think it's intention to come in here and be, be negative and drive division between the people, the people that do this show and the people that support the show. Guess what? I know these guys ain't going to let it happen. So I'm just going to warn you guys that come in here with that intention. We got an idea of who you are. And I'm going and, and I know the people in this chat are going to call you out when they see you doing it too. We're building a great positive community, a great positive space for people to come in and engage in Chicago Bears conversation. And we are not going to let people come in here and bring that down. I am sorry. You can go somewhere else with that bullshit. It's not welcome here. I'm just going to say that right off the top. And I apologize to you in advance. If you don't uh, gel right with what we do over here, I just don't like it. You know, I get to call some shots around here sometimes, and that's just the way it's going to be. But let's give some shout outs to some people who share, uh, kids. Who shared the uh, content? Do you, you see the people with the uh, thumbs up? I see I see Oliver, Keith Harris. I got Oliver Chapman. I got It's Crimson Yiddig. Uh, like, big shout outs to you, Crimson. You've been pretty interactive tonight, and it's first time I'm seeing you. Illinois Jones, our guy, Daryl Gibson. Um, who else? Who else? Jake Grizz. I think that's uh, I think that's what I see. Right Call out the bishop. Oh, Mr. Mayhem. Bishop? Mr. Mayhem's done it. Sorry, Chris, you were saying? Mr. Bishop. Didn't he? Bishop shared it for sure. The bishop definitely shared it. Bishop shared it. Um, yeah, I think we got it. Appreciate you guys, man. We, we got to work on doing that, man. We got to ask you guys, and you guys do enough for us as it is, but just got to ask a little bit more to get the content out there and make it shareable for other people. There's always going to be somebody out there that your share could always bring us more support. And so we'll just ask that a little bit more often. If I forget, I want you guys to tell me in the chat, hey, no, man, don't forget to ask people to share. Please do that, and we'll shout you out on the show. That's the best we could do, man, is to give you a shout out. Because soon, soon, we'll start, start showing some of you guys some real gratitude physically in some of the uh, merchandise that we'll have coming out. But you'll see that when it gets there. I think we're getting real close. Ain't that right, J2K? Yeah. We're okay. on it. All right. All right, man. Well, with that being said, man, I really appreciate and love you guys for being here and being a part of this conversation and helping us make it interesting, man. I love you guys to death, man. I really do. But before we get out of here, I got to leave you guys with these, fam these famous words. Love, peace, and hair grease, y'all. Peace, y'all. Avoid the eclipse. <laughs>